Greetings, everyone. I come to you once again in the most precious name of Abba Father, giving you a throne, a, gr a word straight from the throne of grace. Before I do, let me go ahead and call in the Raha Kadesh to help me with this one. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Holy Spirit, speak through me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Thank you for your assistance, your guidance, your love. In Yeshua's holy name I pray. Amen. Okay, so this is my hubby right here. And I want to chime on here because <clears throat> my husband and I, when we got married, we got married under the pretense of God to do God's work. We specifically married saying, okay, we're going to do God's work. And when we got married, we didn't love each other. It was, it was different than the Cinderella story. We did not love each other. And I knew that he did not love me. And I was cool with that because I was like, God is cool because I asked you for love. I've dated celebrities. I've dated millionaires, but I was looking for love. And then I realized I was like, wait, my husband and I, we're going to get married. But our agreement, like people do prearranged marriage marriages, our agreement was for him and I to do God's work. That's what we got married under. Not for the love of us, but for the love of God. And we focus on doing God's work and for the love of God. And y'all, when I tell you that them trials and the tribulations kicked in, ooh, they kicked in. They kicked in so deep because my husband and I, we had no love for each other. And I was like, it's cool if he don't love me, long as he loves you, God. Long as he's talking to you, long as he serves you, God. But then my husband began to go under a deep spiritual attack. He began to go under a deep spiritual attack because him and I at this point getting together, we are even to a stage of breaking generational curses. So when we we're under attack, my husband began to have a lot of narcissistic traits in him that brought up a lot of narcissistic traits and energies within me as well. So we try to reach out for people to counsel us and that didn't work because people blocked, <laughs> people blocked us and, you know, pretty much just disappeared from our channel and uh or from our lives and didn't know how to help us because we weren't just dealing with a a god fearing marriage we were dealing with demonic presence and demonic entities so as i began to research the internet to look for marriage counselors that help you know christian couples or um what's going on with narcissistic uh men and narcissistic women and narcissistic relationships what I end up running into was that there was no, not one video up saying, don't divorce that man. The videos that I saw that were up were divorce him because he committed adultery and the adultery that he committed was with the eyes and you don't deserve narcissism. And God says, you don't deserve no man treating you with narcissism. So I couldn't find that in the Bible though. But I heard everyone say it on the videos, even pastors and preachers and leaders and teachers and guides. But I said, no, I can't make no move until I see it in the word of God. And I couldn't find it in the word of God. And everything I do, I have to first talk to God first and go to God first before, you know, I, I, I get down with it. So my husband's standing there because I want him to share with y'all just his own personal experience and what it was like with coming into a, a marriage a relationship to where him and I were under such attack y'all the attacks have been to the point to where there is no videos about attacks with leaders who are preaching the word of God who want to do the will of God and help God's people but also break generational curses for indigenous folks so here it is. My husband and I were like, ain't nobody doing it. There's no leaders in our generation. So we volunteered to do it. Say, here we are. God, use us. And we didn't know what we were asking at all. And it just came to the point to where all of my old garbage drama junk came up. Because I was like, do you know who I am? I used to date celebrities and I used to date millionaires and people would open the door for me. And who do you think you are? And 
it made me have this rage and this hate within my heart that I feel like God tricked me or was angry with me. So he had me get married to him or I got married to them to him. But maybe I made a mistake or something, but God don't make no mistakes. So I, I had to humble myself after coming from the space of anger and my husband was dealing with his own energies, his own spirits, but I want him to tell you about it. Come, come here. So I don't want to do all the talking, please, sir. So this is my husband, Lion, Lion. call him Lion King. Mm -hmm. And we, we natural y'all, we natural, natural. very natural. Yeah, yeah. So it's all good. Okay. <laughs> But y'all not here for that, okay? It's my husband anyway. So we here to share a message with y'all in reference to what was it like dealing with, um, I'll say narcissistic, narcissistic energies, but yet demonic tears because we had to deal with succubus spirits and incubus spirits and um me walking into the stores and him walking off like he wasn't with me and i was like wait hold on <laughs> so we had to do a lot of fasting and praying and the more fasting and praying that we did the more we were attacked so i want him to share from his perspective what it was like for him um <clears throat> first uh it is um not a easy uh place but um my background is um, God and spirituality and just um, learning more about God because I know that with God, um, I can't do nothing without God. You know, wh whether I, I was in the world doing whatever or being in any place or this, that or so forth. Now that I knew the first thing <clears throat> is that uh, I got to give homage to uh god almighty all right. the time okay but let me stop there okay because okay. yep. first i came out of the tarot world my husband he came down that path but not out of the tarot world but more like the new age like um you know uh a lot of new afterlife uh, yeah. chakras yeah. things of that nature so when we got married after we got married spirits began to manifest in him and i would say well pray and he would say, well, we, we don't believe in the same God. And I was like, well, which God you believe in? So it didn't always, it, it wasn't always like that. And I'm, I'm here to, to keep it real because ain't none of us trying to go to hell. And I don't know about these other channels and what it is that they're trying to front or convey to y'all. But I feel that it's very important because there's a lot of people in the body of Christ who feel like God will just give you this husband. And here it is. You have a Cinderella story. That's not the case at all. So we're here to tell our side, knowing that we're backed by the powers of the kingdom of heaven and we have nothing to hide from nobody because God put us in this position to tell you our story from our own story. Because there are so many of you out there need to know that your marriage is under attack because you are called of God. Your marriage is under attack because you can save so many people's lives and it not just we're dealing with generational curses with the woman, but also with the man. And he's telling me about that. So let me shut up. Um, no, it's good. Um, yeah, there is a, um, a lot of the traits of um, narcissist. And from uh, my experience of that background and that pattern and that trait, um, it comes from um, really um, a, a lack of self-worthiness and a, a lack of self-love and a lack of um knowing that you are love and you care for it and the people that are in your life like your wife um and so forth uh these are the people that are showing you and ministering to you what love is and it's hard to receive it because we have an idea or an ideology of what our, the love should feel like and what it's supposed to be but um the love don't have a, a signature on it. If somebody's, you know, um, yielding, their, yielding to you and giving their right hand, that's love. But being in th the way how the enemy kills, steal, and destroy is he tried to form what the ideology of what love's supposed to be and what's supposed to be um, happening uh, to show love. 
And so he robs you and kills, steal and destroy you by letting you feel um, not worthy of that, um, um, not compatible to that, not um, any of that. So he he gives you or gives that individual uh, narcissistic um, and toxic ways because what the enemy do, he come to kill, steal and destroy. So with that being said, he he knows that um, um, what uh, that your soul needs and what God wants for you and what what is the best thing for you. But the enemy knows uh, your lows and want to keep you trapped in that same realm and that same portal of not being able to um, what I would tell my wife, like, you know, um, give yourself a chance, give yourself a chance and just um and just give yourself a chance and 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 try you know um I, I think in anything in life uh give yourself a chance and try and i think uh, that can be a, a, a like a like a stronghold cuz it has to be in a practice and it has to be formula and it has to be something that's almost like when you um on crutches and you wearing a crutch and you you your 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 the neural uh parts of the brain is signaling to it's okay to be comfortable with um having the crutch and knowing that your leg can't walk but if you believe and you trust in the most high living god and you exercise him and work on on him he's going to be able to help you to challenge um that spot and okay, wait, let's stop there because yeah. mm -hmm. when you say to reach out to the most high living God, that wasn't so easy for you. No, it wasn't. First. No, it wasn't. No, it um, was not. When did you get to the point where you realized that, you know, although today it's good for you to seek counseling, if you can seek counseling, good. However, the challenge with counseling that we ran into is that people can counsel you, mm -hmm. the person, but when it comes to the spirit, they can't counsel you, especially when you're dealing with demonic entities and yeah. demonic presence. And him and I both were dealing with that because we were in a realm where we were trying to break generational curses. And there is not one couple or prophetic ministry that we saw online that was keeping it real to us and letting us know that, you know, yeah, God helped your marriage and he helps your marriage. But you also are under demonic attacks yeah. because of the call in your life and when we try to paint a picture to the public that everything's so holier than thou, or we're just, you know, such a happy, lucky go couple. But behind the scenes, when the camera is off, it's a whole nother different story. God put us in this position to go through those battles and trials and tribulations to tell y'all that it's you're dealing with generational curses mm -hmm. of demonic presence, especially what it was like for me to wake up in the middle of the night to my husband in a full-fledged, you know, encounter with a succubus spirit. Yeah. And that right there will make anyone freak out. Like, wait, what is this? I'm about to leave you. You tripping. But I took it to God. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of arguments that we had. But then even with the arguments, my ego would kick in. And I would be like, I'm not finna deal with this. And God would have me humble myself. He would have me humble myself and just pray. And it got to the point to where I didn't even want to pray for him, for me, for nobody. I just wanted out. I just wanted to leave. And there were and still are to this day attacks. But we've come to a place now where what do we do with those attacks? I'll let you tell. Um, pray. Um, pray uh, with your family and pray when you're not with your family and pray for your family. And just pray, you know, pray because um, well, like everyone says, prayer changes things. So it may not fall in the lap within a day, but you just keep sowing that seed to prayer. Eventually, you know, um, your prayers will be heard and, and, and things will start um, changing a little bit and still trying to get through in it. But it's not forming and we may see it form, but we will catch it. Uh, not we, but God, when we pray to him, we'll catch it and and um, stop it from being a a major um, thing. So so we went through this yeah. 
part where you were saying that you didn't feel like you were good enough or yeah. worthy enough yeah. to be with someone like me. Yeah. And what do you mean by someone like me? And what do you mean by good enough or worthy enough? Can you share that with the men out there, or even the women that, because I have my own role in it too, where I felt like I've had better relationships, but they were not biblically based. And we got together, our relationship has all been biblically based. And you would think that it's just a walk in the park, that everything is just so peachy king and beautiful now that God put us together. But when you don't start off with God and I have children from prior relationships, so I have not been the best saint, the best daughter of God. Um, but like I said, I'm here to keep it real because... I'm not going to have y'all blood on my hand. And God called us to this ministry for us to speak to his children, his daughters, his sons, and share with you that no matter what you're going through in life and even with your own personal self, when you get in a relationship and both of y'all is making it about God, now you're facing generational curses and demons going to come up and out of nowhere. When y'all facing demons, your own personal demons, his own personal demons, both of y'all demons, what your mama did to cause her to cheat on your daddy and your sisters, they all doing the same thing. Your brothers, they doing the same thing or your fathers, what they did to cheat on the mamas. And then we're in this place right now to where we had to face these generational curses. We had to face these trials, these tribulations and then begin to hate each other for not being like the people that we wanted to be with or the people that we wanted to be around. And that became even more challenging. Um, this to say, um, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> being real, um, everybody says that, but it, it's a challenge cause, um, there's a lot of, um, darkness that has to come up and you, you know, um, part of, um, you and your partner, um, growing, and becoming more tighter and stronger is, you know, going into like, whoa, I ain't, I ain't know none. Uh, whoa, you know, this and that. There's a lot of our, our our partners and marriages and people that, you know, if we knew about them, we would probably just, you know, cancel, <laughs> take a rain check and not even take a rain check, just cancel it all. Mm -hmm. But to be able to know that, you know, when God is in the midst and he's bringing both of y'all to, to that has similarities or things that, um, that are, um, similar. Yeah. Um, it's like, you know, oh uh, shit, man, I'm gonna make a U-turn cause, um, the, I don't want, he, I don't want that. Shoot. I mean, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. We're here to keep it real. Okay. Uh, We're working on these shoot. things. <laughs> shoot. You know, um, uh, to make uh, a U-turn, but then also too, it's like, it's time to face it. It's time to, God is saying, I bring you apart this cause, um, this was probably a generational curse or whichever, and you and that person are going to uh, do the favor, which is to face it and and bring about it and keep no, it real. Not fun. And and that's not fun. And and just knowing that, um, you know, um, also um, uh, hope to be able to talk to the men as far as the women too, because they both had the similarity. It's like um, uh, getting um, in a place of marriage and stuff. Um, you know, um, take, uh, the time and, you know, um, and possibly God, you know, I can't, I can't say or stop what God, cause God may say, you know, uh, work on your, your healing first before you do it, or no, nah, this is the part where I brought you into this. So y'all both can, uh, do the healing together and, mm -hmm. and come out good. So, um, uh, what I realized too, that, um, uh, when I came in, um, I was excited and I was like, man, this and that. But at the same time, I still uh, had um, some some trauma um, behind me that I did not, you know, um, talk or speak up about or whichever. We both did. And so with mm -hmm. that being said, um, you know, um, it, it robbed me from living um, out um, major dreams, which... It's still not over. It's it's we still in the midst, but it, it robbed me from a lot of the years that I've um, that I could have did, um, you know, or some major things. But um, yeah, so yeah. Yeah. 
so that's just a little snippet of it guys we're gonna actually cut it short because my battery's low and um i just want to we're here at a state park right now i want just wanted us to stop and take time out as a family to just spend some time with god and with each other because we're on the road we're out we're preaching the gospel but like i said we'd be under attack We've always been under attack since the day that we met, but God called us to keep it real with y'all because there's no reason for us to, to, ain't no future, no fronting. There's no reason for us to be on here fronting like, yes, we're just the best couple yeah. in the world. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. But even myself being a woman of God and being out there screaming, God so love the world. I was still in this space to where I was holding anger and animosity in my heart and energies of regret for my husband and for my marriage. But I also realized those were energies that I recognized that my mother did to my father or my grandmother to my gr my grandfather or same with my husband. And some drink. No, I don't want this is energy drink right now. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Be fine. Uh, but do you want something to drink? I take a little sip. Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you for offering it to me, Roshi. Mm -hmm. That was very nice of you. Okay. You good? Yeah, okay. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. But y'all, <clears throat> back to what I was saying. I feel it's important for us to come on here to keep it real with y'all and say that if you are in a marriage and your marriage is being attacked, it's being attacked because of the call that's on your life. The devil wants us to get on here and to tell y'all it's just so peachy king and it's just beautiful and it's just great and that we don't have no trials and tribulations we have more trials and tribulations we're attacked more by entities and demons and spirits because what we're trying to do for the most high god people can consult us all day as a being but not as a spiritual being because a lot of counselors that we reached out to even christian pastors and churches we reached out to don't know how to cast out demons and that's our ministry we are true demon slayers, but we first had to deal with slaying the demons within ourselves and be real about it because none of y'all hold the keys to the bottomless pit, only the most high living God, only the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So whoever you are out there, if you're having a problem with your marriage, if you having a problem with your wife, if y'all to the place to where it's like, it's just all havoc in your household, um, a couple of tips. Um, before we jump off that we did one was making sure our environment was very very clean make sure that we clean as a family yeah. keep clean the car clean the house clean your body hygiene clean nobody should be smelling nobody um you know still even though you're a couple you don't especially when you're not really feeling each other like that you don't care if you look like you just stepped outside the house from doing the lawn or whatever and we do farming too so most of the time we look like we did farming 24 7 that wasn't the case we were just under attack and not only that our finances began to get attacked um people began to slander us uh we only have each other and god and i just feel that it's important that y'all know that you're not alone you're being attacked by demonic entities demonic spirits but even if both y'all can't pray together all it takes is one person because even though i was more the praying one when I got to the point where I couldn't pray, my husband all of a sudden came out of the new age world and he began to hold his Bible. He began to pray. He began to call the family fast and all of us would go on the family fast. All of us would go on the prayers or the water fast or begin to clean the house, clean the car, clean ourselves, throw away specific, um, uh, you know, uh, jewels or whatever that was in the house. Uh, un momento, por favor. Un momento. So... I'm going to go minister to these people, but we just wanted to, it's meant for us to stop here anyways. Like I said, my battery's low. We'll come back another time and do more of the video. But in the meantime, um, we love each and every one of you. Fight for your marriage by going to God and knowing that it's about breaking generational curses right now. And remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Take away your plate. Pray fast. 